and welcome to the Random Randomness Podcast. I'm your host, Amara Franklin, and I am here with my co-host, Ben Beverly, and Frank the dog, because Frank. he's just not going to be quiet. <laughs> he wants to be involved. <laughs> he does. Plus, he probably hears your voice and is like, hey, that's my friend. He misses Grandpa. He does miss Grandpa. So, funny story for all of you listening. Ben Beverly was at my house for about, what was it, three days over the last weekend? And we could have sat down and recorded our podcast, and we did not a single time. Because by the time my kids go to bed, I'm tired. So, if this doesn't happen by, like, noon, it's not. It's just not happening. 3 p.m. Well, 3 p.m. for you, because you're now now on the East Coast. So I Back am I'm on the West Coast. Yes. You, honestly, you seem so much just calmer and happier just in the last, like, 24 hours. And well, I, like, once I saw the traffic and the rain and, like, the chaos, I was just like, here I am. I can just do so much. I'm not on a fucking mountain anymore, like, away from everybody. You were 30 minutes away from me, but I also don't leave my house. I seriously feel like we talk more when you're clear across the country than the entire time you lived 30 minutes from me. Well, also, I just got here. I haven't started working. <laughs> that is true. I think you said you have our icebreaker question for today. I do. I do. Are you ready for it? I am, but why am I scared? I don't know. I mean, this is uncensored. So, okay. So for VPR, since, you know, obviously huge fan. Have you ever played Fuck, Mary Kill? I haven't. I love that game. Okay. Oh, God. I'm scared. Okay. Okay. But so yeah. it's going to be VPR edition for Fuck, Mary Kill. So who would you? From anybody on the cast? Anybody. Any season. Any season. Oh, goodness. Okay. Oh, that's so hard. Okay. So... I am, I'm going to, it's so funny because like I don't actually in real life, like I've never been attracted to women, but all of the men on this show are yeah. so absolutely unappealing <laughs> to me <laughs> that like not a single one of them would be my fuck, but I'm like, okay, I'm marrying no. Lala. I can tell you that right now. So I'm going to marry Lala because I adore her and she wants to have like a bunch of kids and I already have two of them. So there, there you go two kids right there for you so i'm gonna marry lala and we're going to have a great life and we'll both be able to go have affairs because i mean there you go and i'm going to i'm going to i guess i'm gonna fuck uh <laughs> ariana i mean why not she's my second favorite and i'm going to I mean, I feel so bad because I don't want to actually have somebody die. And I feel like this is like a death it's, threat. It's like no. hypothetical. Not like we're not manifesting threat. this. No way. We're not manifesting. <laughs> this is just a game. This is not some sort of threat. Okay, maybe like tell- fuck, Mary, kick off. Like, <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Let's like not murder anybody because like this is not a true crime podcast. Love this. So um, we're not going to kill. We're going to... Fuck Mary and banish you from reality TV forever, Tom Sandoval. How did I know? She had to know. Maybe because he's like the most hated man in America. I kind of was feeling bad for him. Okay, wait. So, okay. So, here's mine. Obviously, I'm talking Lala because I love her. Wait. Um, did you say you're... I, I missed that. Are you marrying or are you fucking Lala? No, I'm, I'm fucking her. Okay, got it. Okay. Uh, and who are you marrying? I'm marrying Ariana because she doesn't want kids and she's like a millionaire now. And I just, I'm obsessed with her. Um, honestly, like obsessed with her before this season. Like, she's a little diva right now, but I love it. Have your moment, girl. And then, you know, I'm going to kick off short. You're going to kick off shorts. Okay. Yeah. See, I have, I have so many thoughts about shorts that we're going to have to get into. Okay. So, cool. So, that actually, that would be such a great show because there's no more shorts and Sandy. Yeah. Okay. Like, they're gone. And yeah. then it's just all the ladies that are left. It's like, oh, wait. I, I love this. I want to keep James. So, I'm going to have a three-way with Ariana or a three-way with Lala and James. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm married to Lala. <laughs> But I've said you can go have your affairs. So she's having an affair with you and James. 100%. And I'm sleeping with your wife. And Looks I'm like not into women. <laughs> well, everybody so else is. Fun. I love your icebreaker. That's so fun. And that actually brings us right into the main topic, which is where we're just going to be going off about VPR today because this show is just wild. The drama. So, 
so much drama. And so I, I'm trying to figure out there. I feel like there is so much to talk about because we're now nine episodes in. And just to kind of clarify, because this is our first time doing a podcast, we're not really like a breaking news or entertainment news. We're more like entertainment commentary, <laughs> a.k.a. shit talking podcast about things in entertainment or life whatever i'm i'm on my second cup of coffee and it's very strong so i was thinking instead of trying to remember what happened in every single episode not with my memory (laughs) no we should just go like person by person and just talk about our thoughts about those specific cast members and the things that have kind of happened within this season plus slash stand of scandal all the things Let's start with you. You pick a cast member, and we'll start there. I kind of want to save Sandy for last because he's a lot. He is a lot. Um, okay, but definitely I want to start with Lala because I like just saw all the Instagram stuff with like her being pregnant and like she. And then the episode I saw, like she was telling Lisa she wants to get a sperm daddy. Right. So I'm like curious to that, and then like is she gonna be. Was she pregnant on the show the last time? I didn't see that season, I don't think. I think it I if I remember correctly, I think she was pregnant in like the pandemic season. So like they, they can film for a long time and I'm pretty sure that was the t- the amount of time that she was pregnant. So I feel like she got pregnant and had the baby when they weren't recording or like filming anything. And then when they came back for was it season nine, I think was the season right after the pandemic, she already had the baby. So her and Sheena had both already had babies. I believe that's the timeline. So no, we didn't get to see her pregnant. I don't think we're going to get to see a pregnant Lala like in the next season if there is a season 12, which I keep seeing reports of if this is the last one. Yeah. I see report. There's not like we really nobody really knows. I also feel like Bravo just doesn't cancel shows. I, well, no, like, um, like the real world. What do you watch? That's been on for like 20 years. Real Housewives yeah. of Beverly Hills. There's so many spinoffs, but I have only allowed myself to watch that one. It was for research for my book. And then somehow that turned from research to the show just completely warping my brain. And yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so I don't think we're going to get to see a pregnant Lala based on their shoot filming loop. Well, actually, no, maybe we will because I think they actually start filming usually in July. Because well, they were filming in July in Tahoe when I was there on vacation. I didn't see them because I didn't know. Oh, my God. Uh, I didn't even get to go into Harvey to see Wolf. I literally walked right past it. They were working on it, you. too. Oh, I will be there uh, when the day that it opens. If it ever opens, I will be there. So I'll go for the both of us. I'll be in Spain by then. You have so many plans. Okay. <laughs> So we may see a pregnant Lala then because if she's pregnant now, I think she's like maybe five months in. So I don't know. Either way, it's made her a lot softer and I I kind of like the balance for her. I do too. I really like it. I think she's she's my favorite because she will speak her mind. She knows what her job is. Her job is to cause drama and to be extra. And she shows up every day when there's a camera in her face and she is extra when she needs to be. But she is also, as she says, softer this season. I think she's more forgiving and understanding and she's working through her trauma and we get to see that. But she also knows when to be a little extra, which is great. I feel like, and I'm seeing kind of certain things being said in like a podcast here or there where they kind of all allude to the fact that none of them talk. None of them are actually friends aside from when there's the cameras i thought the whole point that think... they were friends that's the point yeah like i feel like that was why this was better than like a real housewives where the real housewives they just kind of like cast rich women and throw them together and make them go on trips and do things and go to parties together and some of them know each other some of them are meeting for the first time on camera VPR used to be different because back when it started, they all like worked together, were dating each other, were best friends. But over the years, as their fame has picked up, friendships fall apart or dwindle, or you know, you go your separate ways. People get famous. And people get famous. I could be wrong, but I feel like none of them really talk anymore that much. 
Ariana is doing her thing, which is fantastic to see. And I love it. Lala and Sheena talk every day. Like Sheena and Lala are super close. And Tom and Sandoval are really close. Katie has other friends that were on previous seasons. And I, I don't, I'm sure her and Ariana are, are friends and talk. But they don't all like do the things that we see on camera all together all the time that much I feel like maybe there is some but like Lala for example Lala and James I don't really feel like they like call up Katie and they're like hey you want to go get coffee unless they're filming so how do you feel about the whole conversation about like Lala befriending not really befriending but doing things with Tom and and the there's this whole thing and blow up that's supposed to happen at the reunion where Ariana and Lala get into it I would, how do you feel about Lala interacting with um them? I'm really like surprised to be honest just because she's hated him the entire well now they used to be like friends when she first got on the show which was surprising as well but then like they've hated each other up until like the last episode or something so I was like really surprised that she even gave him that opportunity but I I think she's on this whole growth and movement that she is just like whatever is good for me and my healing like that's all that matters and that's why I kind of love her but like what you don't let Tom in your life like that See, that's what I'm saying. I don't think she's necessarily letting him in her life. I think she just knows she has a job to do. And what are they going to film if no, if everybody actually refuses to film with him and everybody actually refuses to go do things? Like, let's say Tom was going to the trip to Tahoe and they're like, "Mm, nope, but Tom's there. We're not going. That's your job. Like, you signed a contract. You have to actually interact. So I think there's a level of that of like, yeah, I mean, they have. To. I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen the contract. I'm just making an assumption based on what I'm watching. <laughs> like, but I that feel like Ariana's like living there. That is just freaking bizarre. And <laughs> okay, we will get to that. That is bizarre. I don't understand why she's still living with him. Actually, she did just buy a house, a $1.6 million house with views of the Hollywood sign. So um, maybe I should have married Ariana. <laughs> uh, Think ahead. So that's kind of my thoughts on Lala. So let's move to, oh God, should we go to Ariana or Sheena next? Oh, Sheena. Oh, Sheena, Sheena, Sheena. <laughs> I don't know. Not only like so many bash her things. because I got into like bullying, but she's just. No. Never she's been my favorite. Enough. Not from day one. Like never. I just like. I know. I go through waves with her where like there were certain parts in the beginning where it was just like whatever roll your eyes and then there was other times I'm like well she's kind of adorable and then other times I'm just like Ugh, no and what's so funny is I kind of like her podcast though I don't listen to every episode but I listen to some of them and I I dislike her more on the show than I dislike her on her podcast uh, which is funny because it's the same person the joke is that like vpr is basically turning into the sheena show where everything's about her but then she has a podcast where everything literally is about her and i'm like well i like you here but i don't like you here but she probably Uh, doesn't talk about herself the whole time huh oh no she totally does Uh, here's the thing like i feel like some of the points that she's trying to make are valid i think that her delivery is awful Awful. Like, I'm sorry, the joke about the backup dancer. Just no, I'm sorry. No, we're not going to talk about how Ariana was your backup dancer at a show that had like five people that she paid for. Pretty sure you paid for, you know, like that's, I don't know if that's true, but that's what I say because I I feel like that's the truth. Um, No, she did. I just watched that season. It's so silly. And it's like, I like when she can make fun of herself. When she can be a little bit like, yeah, my singing's not great. Yeah, I have to auto-tune everything. But it's fun and I enjoy it. Own that. Yeah, I'm all good with you being a crummy singer and doing shows and singing good as gold and leaning into your silliness and leaning into the fact and understanding that you're not great, but you enjoy it. But when she is going through and she's saying shitty things like, oh, back when you were my backup dancer, like, come on, your jealousy is showing too much. That's really where it gets me. I think that two things can be true at the same time. She can be happy for her friend and all the success that Ariana is getting and also be jealous. 
And it is okay to feel those feelings. And it is okay to be a little jealous because you wanted something and your friend is getting it and still be supportive of your friend. I think that even having that as a conversation is a good conversation to have where two things can be true. You can be supportive and also jealous. But where you get me is when your jealousy starts turning you into an asshole. Yeah. Yeah, literally. Don't um, say everything you're fearing. Right? Right. Exactly. So that's where that's where I think she loses a lot of people is when it comes to the delivery. And then the stuff with the the Sandoval and wanting to, you know, be friends with him. Again, I see where she's coming from again because she has this long relationship. He's done nice things. They did have a friendship that wasn't just casting on the TV show. And it is hard to go through a friendship breakup. And to say, I hate what you did, and therefore I'm choosing to be friends with her, which means I can no longer be friends with you because I don't support what you did. I think that it's okay to mourn that friendship. But it's, again, how she goes about it, talking about how this is so hard for me, and nobody's talking about how hard this was for me. She's crying more than in the fall this season. Like, I can't. Like, if I drink, I would make a drinking game of every time she cried, and I would be hammered because she doesn't stop. She doesn't stop. And, I mean, I cry over everything. Like, so, you know, but she's cool. had three seasons of like weddings and shit. Relax. Like we had to go through your I failed did. singing career. We had to go through your failed marriages and weddings. And like you had right. moments. Like they weren't great, but it's not our fault. Right. <laughs> Everything's it's never about me, really. Then just like go on your podcast. This is an ensemble show about lots of people, and you have gotten married twice, and it has been about you. I just, yeah, it's just really frustrating. Again, I think that her her points and her delivery just don't match up. Uh, also, okay, there are two very different stories about how her making out with shorts in Vegas. How? What do you think? It, where do you think the truth is? Do you think his recollection of they like fully made out? And she was complicit in it and even joked about it in, like, December is true. Or do you think her, like, oh, no, I'm so innocent. He just, he tried to grab me and kiss me. And I was like, no, no, we can't do this. Which version do you think is true? Um, I don't know because I don't remember him, like, saying if they made out or not. I remember her being like, no, that didn't happen. It was, like, a kiss or something. But I also feel like she loved to kiss married people so I feel like she definitely did 100% I think and here's why I and believe Tom's him. always very honorful he gets caught but he offered that up because he didn't care just offered it up out of yeah. nowhere 20 I years later it was funny because he is ridiculous i think he's i think i think it happened i think it absolutely happened and i think she's spinning and i think she wasn't expecting that conversation to come up and you can tell by the way she was ham like i don't know what's happening like you could see her brain like glitching out when katie brought it up to her and she's just now painting a narrative because she doesn't want to be put in a bad light and she doesn't like the story so i i believe shorts on this one yeah, I mean, I so, don't like him, but I believe him. So, do you have any thoughts about Schwartz or anything that's been going on this season? I really never do. I just don't like him. He's just there and he's there and little kind yeah. of a dick or he's kind of not. <laughs> like, I just. Exactly. I don't like, like him. I don't like how complicit he was in everything and then tries to be like, oh, it wasn't me. Really? You went on double dates. Like, you went on double dates. You let him go to your house to have an affair. You were a very big part of this. And now you don't think that the backlash that you're getting is fair. So, like, don't do shitty things. But also, I feel like he's just, like, a dumb teddy bear sometimes. But also, is that dumb teddy bear act that he does an act? Or is he just a dumb teddy bear? I really don't know. He is the one that I really can't put my finger on. Is he, like kind of goofy or is he like the most maniacal of all of them because he portrays this he like puts out this image that is more calculating than anybody i really don't know so he's either a 
lovable stupid teddy bear or he's a psychopath i really can't tell you which one uh, <laughs> but i mostly like him i mostly like him i just don't like how he always takes sandoval's side on everything to the point where it ruined his marriage and he got a divorce That's- yeah a hundred percent okay so katie i feel like whoop. There's just not really much to talk about. She, I, I like her. I just don't find her very problematic. Um, I just so realized just I hate you everybody on the cast. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I watch this show every week and I like none of you. Do we have anything to say about Ariana other than we love you? Um, I think this is, I loved her. Like, pretty, like, obviously I wouldn't want her to be like cheated on or something, but like, this season like i'm definitely feeling like she's she's in like an anger vibe well yeah i mean she has every right to be angry my only thing is why are you still in the house that's what i'm saying why like everything doesn't own... make sense like you can't say that <laughs> this, that and the third and then you're right down the hall right exactly like and I understand set boundaries. If you are going to have that be in this person's life, you will not be in mine because they do not have access to me. I think that is great. But you set live your there. boundaries. You live with him. So you can't say that you don't feel safe. You I don't feel have like boundaries. When you, yes, exactly. Like it's great to have boundaries. And I but I think feel like when you say words like I don't feel safe or I won't feel safe if you interact with this person that I literally live with. Right. Sure, I don't talk to them, but like that's if 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 you don't feel safe, then you should leave or get a restraining order so he has to leave like words like that i think are important and shouldn't be overstated or used in the wrong context mm-hmm. so glad she got about a house though so she is moving out so love she that for her. she did yes it's a 1.6 million dollar home so that's Good where you married get her. To live when you marry her right and then i'll just you know show up at your house because apparently i'm having an affair so let's end with santa balls Oh God! I don't like. Don't even have anything to say because he's so over the top and ridiculous that like I don't even want to talk about him. I I don't like. I feel bad for him on like a mental health level because like everything yeah. that's in there can't be like fun to deal with. Um, but no, like, not at all. On the opposite receiving end, I feel bad for everybody that comes into contact with him. So I can't say he's a fake. I feel like when he talked about suicide to Lisa. Okay, I'm trying to make sure I phrase this correctly because I don't want him to be feeling those feelings. I think from a mental health standpoint, 100%, like nobody deserves the amount of hate. Yes, what he did was horrible, but like literal death threats, come on. So I feel like that's over the top. And if he really was feeling suicidal, that's horrible. If he wasn't feeling suicidal and he brought that up to Lisa, knowing that her brother committed suicide, he is the worst human being. Like, that is even worse than cheating on Ariana, in my opinion. Like, that is that is emotionally messing with somebody in a really sick way. So it's like, I don't, I don't know how to explain this. Like, I don't want him, I don't want either of those things to be true. Like, I don't want him to have felt that way, but I also don't want him to have made that up. Does yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, and I feel like I feel like it is really sad seeing the aftermath of what he did because what he did was horrible, but also like don't try to kill people. You know what I mean? Like death threats are out of control, and and the fact that his business partners and his business and his mom's retirement money or whatever he borrowed is on the line really is sad. Um, but also he's just so ridiculous. Like he is so over the top. And the part that really gets me is he used to be one of my favorites in the beginning. I absolutely loved him, but I feel like watching this show because I binged it very quickly after the whole Sandoval thing, Sandoval happened. So it's almost like watching each season in a row. You can really see where his ego took over yep. and he stopped being him. Yeah. So, um, also, dude, you don't get the house. Like, just sell it. Like, you, why would you want to keep the house? Just buy a new one. Get your money. Move on. Stop fighting her. And, um, yeah, just, like, move on. Everybody just needs to move on. <laughs> Speaking of moving on, you have. Yeah, I was just going to say, no, I'm going to ending the podcast because I have to go back to work and you need to charge your phone. 
So <laughs> we will end this with a happy little story, which is one I found. It's just like a little picture I found on Facebook. I'm going to try to find it and post it. But it was just this restaurant posted this thing that basically says like they're prepaid meals. So if you don't have a meal, you can walk up and you can just say like, oh, um, I have no money like can I have a meal and somebody has already paid for these so then they just essentially tell the kitchen to make the order and give you know hungry people their food and I just think that that's such a loving and sweet thing I don't know what restaurant this is where in the world or where in the country they are I believe that I read in a post that there are lots of places that do this and I just think it's such a sweet and kind thing to do so if you are ever in a restaurant and you see that on the wall I would say definitely buy somebody a meal. Thank you so much for listening to our first official episode of the Random Random.